All right, guys, welcome to your 27th video. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is working on handling the information whenever the user fills out that register form. So the first thing we did was we basically validated all of the information. We made sure that the username wasn't empty and it was only letters and numbers. Did the same for email and password. So now they should have good information. However, if they did make a mistake and they did cause an error, in the example, maybe you forgot to enter a username, then what we did is we took an error message and we stored it inside an array called error. So we want to remember that because this is how we know, do we want to handle this information and throw it inside our database or do we not want to? Well, if anything is stored inside that array, then that means that they have generated an error. So if your array is not empty and there's something inside it, then we don't want to store anything in the database because obviously they F something up. So let's go ahead and test for that right now. In order to test if an array has something in it, then just go ahead and use the keyword empty. And now go ahead and type in the name of your array, which is error. And what this is going to do is this bit of code is going to run hopefully this is good info if they didn't generate any error messages this is the bit of code that's going to happen because their array is empty no errors however if they did go ahead and they made a mistake maybe you know they didn't enter a password or maybe you know they had a weird symbol in their email then they obviously have generated some errors so it's our job now to display the errors on the screen and let them know hey this is what you did wrong so let's go ahead and just make a variable and I'm gonna name this error underscore message and this is the variable as you can see right here that displays at the very top of the form whenever you make an error and I don't got it right there hold on it's on my other let me just go Danielle um, 1986.org and go to that register I probably should have had this up before but this is basically right here the error message that's gonna display so that's what we're gonna be building right now so in order to do that like I said go ahead and first store this in a variable span and you can just use single quotation marks we aren't using any variables span in the class for that styling for the red and um, the white lettering is error. We already made that class, if you can't remember, in our CSS file. So, actually made that tag a little bit wrong. So that's where our span is going to be. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need a closing span. So let me just go ahead and, actually I'm not even going to copy that. So, let me just copy this. A little bit lazy here, but you know, nothing wrong with that. Error message, and instead of just setting it equal to something else you can't do that because that'll change the variable we want to go ahead and append an additional span on here I guess double string single quotes it doesn't really matter which is the ending span and two breaks definitely could have typed that but I'm way too lazy so basically as you can clearly see any text that we type in here is going to be in between two spans thus making it white lettering with a red background it just looks like an error message so then you're saying so how the heck are we gonna type all the error messages in here are they stored in another variable well all of the error messages are stored in this array called error and it's our job whenever they do cause an error message to loop through that array and output each message so in order to do that the easiest way that we can loop through an array is this for each error which is of course the name of your array as key values now hopefully you understand this from uh, my PHP tutorials if not go and look under uh, for each loops and obviously you'll understand but what we want to do was we want to take each of those error messages and output it to the screen now each of the thing in your array or each of the strings or error messages is going to be stored in this values variable so go ahead and copy that because we're going to need it later on and actually before you do that just copy this it's a little bit easier and then go ahead and copy this and I'll tell you guys what I'm doing in just a second and this it needs to be in between uh, double quotation marks because it is indeed a variable so basically what we're saying is this we want 
a span class because anything we put inside this class is going to look like an error message. It's just going to, you know, visually prompt the user to say, hey, you messed something up. And then once we have that, we need to loop through our array of error messages that the user did because they messed something up. And each error message is going to output it on the screen. And therefore, you know, there you have it. Obviously, I don't even really need to explain. Just go ahead and look. You see what's happening. So that's what we're going to do for the error messages. Now, whenever they don't have any error messages, then what we want to do is this. We're going to have it set up where we want to validate their information by email. You know, whenever you sign up for a website and it says, okay, you're signed up, but in order to use the site, you need to confirm or we sent you an email, click on the link, and then you're good to go. That's a really good uh, way to prevent spam and bots from signing up for your site. So here's how the site is going to work. In our database, we have two tables, temp users and users. Temporary users are the people who first sign up, but then in order to get in the real database, the users, they need to click on a link in their email. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be inserting their temporary information into a table, and then once they click that link in their email, then they're moved into the permanent users database where they can begin using all of the features of the website. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.